In .NET 8, we are now able to initialize lists and arrays cleanly using the new collections expression syntax. Let's see how they work in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. Let's jump right into the code and I already have the code written to start us out. So this is a .NET 8 console application and I have a couple of different types of arrays uh, or lists, sets of data uh, created. First, I have an integer array called ages array, which I have initialized with these initial values. And I have a list of integer called ages list that I have initialized with these initial values. And then I'm passing both of these arrays into this print ages uh, method that takes an I enumerable of type int and it prints out a count of the number of entries that you pass in, right? So this is how we have initialized uh, integer arrays in the past. So we have the curly brace syntax. And then for a list of integer, we have to use the, the instantiation, the new, and then the initial values in order to instantiate. Well, that is a little bit, uh, you know, there's two different syntaxes for two different types of sets of data. It's a little different, right? We kind of have to remember this syntax. And then what if we want to call this print ages again? We want to pass in a blank set. How do you pass in a blank set? Well, we could say something like this. No, that doesn't work. Okay, so we could say new. Well, we can't say new because new what? It's an I enumerable we're passing in. So you have to say something like new list of int like so. And that's kind of ugly, but you know, okay, we don't have to do that very often. We can probably think of, you know, only a handful of cases where we do something similar to that. But with .NET 8, there is a new syntax that makes all of this easier. So the new syntax is really simple. Replace your curly braces with square brackets. Okay, that is now initialization for an integer array. But for a list of integer, replace everything with just square brackets. Okay, so this same syntax works for both of these. In fact, pretty much any list type it will work for. What it does is it figures out what the list type it's going into is, and it figures out how to properly initialize it. Because there are different ways to initialize a set of data depending on what type it's going into. And under the covers behind the scenes, the .NET system is saying, okay, what's the most efficient way of doing it for this particular type? And that creates that code. We don't have to worry about it. We can just say, hey, this is an initial value and put it inside of square braces. And then down here, this one right here, we can just pass in square braces. And that indicates an empty set. So this has really simplified the initialization of all list types or most list or most set types. Uh, I keep saying list, but I'm talking generically LIS, lowercase LIST, not the generic list of T, um, but most sets of data because we just create them the same way or initialize them the same way, irrespective of which type it's going into. So it does not matter if it's an I enumerable of int or a list of int or an integer array, the way we initialize them now is all the same. Now you may say, well, why do they make this change now? And one reason is because they're working on simplifying the language. And this is absolutely simpler. I can't tell you the number of times I had to think through, how do I initialize an integer array? I don't use arrays very often at all. And so I'd forget, is it curly braces or is it square brackets or is it new and then curly braces or, you know, and you try and go through all the different permutations to figure out which one's the right one. 
Well, now it's all the same. It's just square braces, you're done. So part of it is it's just easier and cleaner to do it this way. But the other thing is that we do use this syntax, the just open and close uh, square braces to indicate a empty array in the pattern matching system. So when you're pattern matching, you can use an empty square brackets to indicate an empty array. And so what they did was they took that same syntax and are using it now for creating arrays too. So they're being consistent with the pattern matching versus initialization. So they're bringing that consistency into the language while also simplifying the language by doing this. So that's really all there is to collection expressions. You just use square braces when you are initializing a set of data like list, integer, I enumerable, and so on. And it will figure out how to create that, uh, that structure based upon which type it's putting into that variable. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.